What's the story of Morning Glory? What is the word? Hummingbird, thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Married at First Sight UK Season 7, Episode 2. So this was a good episode. I was thoroughly entertained. So let's start off with Thomas and Adrian. Thomas is 31 years old. He's a mental health care assistant. His mother is his best friend. He has been engaged twice, never married, and he had always wanted to be accepted. So he would always present um, very masculine, but he got to a point in his life where he was like, no, I can't do that anymore. That's just not me. I have to be my true self. So um, he decided to let his razzle dazzle shine. And he is very flamboyant and he is, you know, entertaining, laugh of the party, um, all of that. And he says that he wants a heteronormative life where it's, you know, the two dads, the kids, you know, taking family trips together. That's the kind of life that he eventually wants to have. Then we meet Adrian and Adrian is 37 years old. He's a digital designer and he's very passionate about the theater. And he also wants to have, you know, the two dads, the kids and, and you know, the whole family package. So now we're at their wedding and Thomas says that one of his deal breakers is that he does not want to leave. Liverpool. He was born and raised in Liverpool and he does not want to leave that city. I think that wasn't going to be an issue with Adrian because when they had a chance to talk, um, a Thomas asked Adrian where he lived and wherever Adrian lived, it seemed like no, I think he asked him where he was from because Adrian was born in Liverpool, but he lives in Manchester. And I think Thomas asked him, where are you from? And he said, Liverpool. I think I'm not sure. So whatever the answer was, Thomas was cool with it. He didn't freak out thinking that he was going to have to leave Liverpool. So Adrian's best friend is Kate. Um, she is also in attendance at the wedding and she is going to be extremely hard to win over. So... We have Adrian at the altar waiting for Thomas. And as Adrian is standing there waiting, Kate can see that her friend is extremely nervous. And so now she's getting kind of worried because she sees how nervous he is. So the first time that Thomas sees Adrian, he notices as he's walking down the aisle, he sees him from behind. And the first thing that Thomas notices about Adrian is his blonde hair. And he says that he has never dated a blonde before. And immediately he looks him over and he's like, like he's just not my type. He didn't like Adrian's hairstyle and he thought that the suit that um, Adrian had on was a little bit too casual because Thomas had on a formal tuxedo and it seemed like Adrian had on a regular suit and tie and I think he was wearing white athletic shoes and white socks with his suit. So yeah, I, that did not go over well for, at all for Thomas. And Thomas seems to be a very, very outspoken type of person. And so I was getting kind of nervous for Adrian. So Adrian, he was more impressed with Thomas than Thomas was of him. And he found Thomas attractive and he saw nothing wrong with him physically. Now, Kate, not so much. She looked over Thomas and she immediately didn't think this was a good match because she thought that Thomas was a little bit too flamboyant for Adrian. Um, Adrian is used to dating men who are more sophisticated, who are a little bit more toned down, a lot more calmer. And um, Thomas may be very sophisticated, but he is not calm and he is not toned down at all. So immediately Kate was like, yeah, this is this is not going to work. Now, when they were standing side by side, I thought they looked absolutely adorable together. So Thomas's mom says that um, immediately she said that Adrian is not Thomas's type, but she said that's a good thing <laughs> because you know the type that Thomas has been choosing has not been working so his type is not working for him as far as long-term relationships Kate says that Thomas is just way too flamboyant and he's not sophisticated enough for Adrian now Thomas in his confessional um, he says that if him and Adrian were in a magazine and they were in the hot and not category he said he would be hot Adrian would be not and then he says, but beggars can't be choosers, can they? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, because Thomas, he, I mean, if he doesn't like something, he just seems like the kind of person where he's definitely going to let you know it. So we're at the reception and we're at the dinner table and it is obviously Thomas and Adrian sitting next to one another. And Katie is sitting obviously on Adrian's side, the other side of Adrian. And so Adrian is right in between Thomas and his best friend, Katie. So Katie asked Thomas, how are you feeling? And Thomas, I mean, 
immediately he lets it rip. He says, I didn't expect him to be a scouser. I don't know what that is. I didn't expect him to have blonde hair. I didn't expect him to be shorter than me. He was just going through his laundry list of all the things that he didn't expect. And so then Katie was like, well, what the hell did you expect then? And Thomas says, I expected somebody tall, dark and handsome. <laughs> and so Katie says, um, so then Katie begins her interrogation. I, she, this woman, I think she literally asked him about 50 questions in a span of five minutes. She asked him, um, have you had work done on your face? And I was like, oh my God, how do you ask someone a question like that? I thought that was extremely rude. I couldn't believe she asked that, but she asked him, have you had work done? And he was like, yes, Botox and stuff. And then she asked him, um, do you get it regularly? He says, yes, four times a year. Then she asked him if he's ever been married. He said, no, but he has been proposed to. Then she asked him, well, who did the proposing? Was it you or the other person? Did he live alone? I mean, she was, those questions were just shooting out and, but he wasn't dodging them. He was answering every single one of them, but it got so bad. Her questions to him got so bad that his mother, Thomas's mother, who was sitting on his other side, she had to interrupt and was like, excuse me, are you from channel four? Because she was acting like some <laughs> investigative reporter. And even with the mom asking her that Katie didn't stop. She just kept on with the questions. And, um, she just kept going. So the whole conversation, this, you know, this, this exchange of uh, Q&A was going on while Adrian was sitting right smack in between them. And Thomas wanted Adrian to step in and to muzzle his damn friend so that him and Adrian could have a chance to talk and to get to know each other instead of Katie dominating the whole conversation with her 50 million questions. So when so then um Thomas and Kate they kind of start going back and forth because Thomas tells her you know can you like relax a little bit so I can have a conversation with my husband you know I haven't had a chance to ask him anything and he hasn't asked me anything you know I'm not married to you I'm married to him and you know you're dominating the whole entire conversation not letting him speak so then they began going back and forth him and Katie start arguing now to the point where it wasn't like you know a full-blown argument but they were definitely having words very politely I might say but they, they were definitely having words to the point where some of the guests were kind of like looking over to see um like what the hell's going on over there so when Katie has a chance to talk to her friend Adrian alone she tells Adrian that this is not for you Thomas is not the one for you I don't like it I don't think he's a good match for you um this is not it but Adrian is intrigued by Thomas because he's not used to someone like Thomas he's never dated anyone like Thomas I guess he's dated guys who were just as you know bland as he is so to have someone like Thomas with all the spice and the attitude and the mouth. Uh, this was interesting to him. It's like a breath of fresh air. So he tells his friend, you know what? Um, I think I want to, I kind of want to see <laughs> where this goes. So when they get to finally, when the two men finally get to have a conversation amongst themselves, um, the first thing that they talk about is Katie. And Thomas was like, uh, I mean, I can understand if she was your mother and she was asking me all of those questions, but she's just your friend. So where does she get off, you know, acting like that? And Adrian says, well, she is kind of like in place of my mom because my mom isn't here. Now, I don't know if he meant his mom has passed away or his mom just didn't come to the wedding. I don't really know. But he said his mom wasn't there. So his friend is kind of like, you know, playing that role and so then Thomas is like okay I understand I really do understand that but she's got one more time <laughs> she's got one more time to cross me or we're gonna have a problem so then Thomas tells him that um, normally he would not have picked someone like Adrian, but he does see that he has a good spirit, he has a kind heart, etc, etc. So he sees all the positive things about Adrian. And so you know, he's feeling a little bit more confident now and he even says that he's beginning to have a little bit of an attraction towards him and then you know they hug it out and then um you know they retire to the um the wedding suite so let's move on from there I mean, it was it was fun thomas was a lot of fun um hopefully like i said that they're going to keep uh, the whole entire we're gonna be able to watch the whole entire season of Married at First Sight UK because I cannot get enough of Thomas he is hilarious so let's move on to our second couple which is April and George April is 32 years old she's a dress designer and um, she's super driven she's ambitious and she actually won Miss Britain now I don't know how big of a pageant that is over there I wonder if it's like you know the way we have Miss America or uh, Miss Universe I don't know but she won Miss Britain um, she's 
she's very very pretty she's adventurous now she does tell us that she was abandoned by her mother at the age of eight and she was raised by her dad and her grandmother unfortunately her grandmother ended up passing away now when she told us about being abandoned by her mom at eight when people say things like that and they're raised by the other parent I always wonder if was it really abandonment or did the parents have an issue you know marital problems amongst themselves and um the father made it to where like the mom couldn't really she she didn't want to stay in that marriage anymore and he maybe he had more money than she did maybe he knew more influential people than she did and so she knew that she wasn't going to be able to win custody and so she just kind of had to go away like um involuntarily just kind of go away because the father wasn't going to make it easy for her to come around to see the child or to have um any type of visitation or custody so she was kind of like forced out and she sees it as abandonment because she doesn't really know the full story. But I've always wondered about that. When people say, you know, my mom left me when I was young, did she really leave or did the circumstances kind of force her out of your life? I'm just asking questions. So she says that she wants somebody tall. She wants somebody funny. She wants somebody family oriented. Uh, Okay, she says she wants somebody found. And the reason why I kind of question that is because later on she talks about how she really, you know, like she really, she didn't know if she wanted children or not. You know, she didn't know if she wanted children or not. But I guess the fact that, you know, you can be family oriented and it's got nothing to do with having kids. So she wants them to be family oriented and she wants them to have a good job and she wants them to be good looking. But she said not too good looking because she doesn't want um, other women to come around and take him away from her. And I'm like, girl, there's no such thing as somebody being too ugly uh, to cheat on you because you can be with Quasimodo himself. Trust and believe. If you like Quasimodo, there's at least one other woman out there who likes him a little bit more and can take him away from you. So the looks doesn't have anything to do with fidelity. But luckily, George is a very good looking guy. He's 40 years old. He's a financial advisor. He dabbles a little bit in modeling and he's also a very avid rugby player. Now he has been married previously. He was married for 12 years and this marriage produced four children and I think they ranged from the ages of 10 to 19 I think he's got four girls and one boy I think the boy is the oldest and um, he's been divorced now for about I think four years he's been betrayed before so he kind of considers so because he's been betrayed before uh, this might play into some security issues jealousy issues etc I don't know I'm just speculating so he considers himself very humorous loving reliable and he wants an ambitious woman which is exactly what April is so the experts when they oh because one of the experts actually talked to him one-on-one -on -one about him being betrayed in the past and she's the one that's why I said that because the expert was like, is that going to like, um, kind of color or influence your new relationship because you've been betrayed before? And he says, no, he says he's, he sees every relationship as something different and independent from any previous relationships. And so he doesn't foresee any problems with that. So the experts consider this couple, the fairy tale match. They think that this is probably going, this couple has a, a very high chance of succeeding. So we're at the wedding and April worries if she's good enough. She has these issues of worrying, you know, if she's good enough for him. And she's a dress designer, so she makes made her own dress. Her dress was okay. Her dress was okay. For someone who made it themselves, it was, you know, it, it, it was amazing because she made this dress herself. So the work that she put into it obviously kind of, you know, adds to it. But okay, the only thing that I didn't like about her dress was the mesh on top. I'm not a fan of mesh on a wedding gown in any shape or form. Um, if you it, it did even look like it needed the mesh. But anyways, that's, ne that's neither here nor there. The mesh up top wasn't, I felt like it should have been pulled a little bit tighter so it laid better on her skin and didn't, um, and it didn't like fold or wrinkle because I think it folded a lot. So you can, you know, it, it really stuck out. But if it would have lain better on top and it was almost invisible, the dress I think would have been a little bit better. But for the fact that she made it, it was a gorgeous dress. So. Um, we find out that her dad is there for her wedding, the dad that raised her and her grandmother, like I said before, had passed away. So um, 
when George is standing at the altar waiting for her, the friends are checking him out. You know, her friends are checking him out and they are pleased. Okay. They thought that he was, you know, really good looking guy. So they were relieved about that. And um, when she walks down the aisle and they see each other for the first time, they love how they, they there's attraction there. There was no issues with um, attraction. She thought he was handsome. He thought she was beautiful. He even said that her eyes were delicious. Now that was sweet, borderline creepy, but he said that her eyes were delicious. So after the ceremony, they have a chance to talk, just the two of them alone. And he is trying to work up the courage to tell her that he has four children. And so he starts off by asking her, is it only you? And she was kind of confused. And she was like, just me? And he says, do you have any children and then she says to him I'm not sure if I want children and then there was a pause and then she says do you have children and he said yes and then she said how many and he said four and she took the biggest gulp <laughs> she swallowed so hard she was trying to keep herself together so like I, I was I asked in my previous review if the experts because married at first sight UK they have people who've been married who have children married at first sight USA I mean US we don't have that at all the people don't are not married before they don't have children so um, I, this is why I asked the question when they're doing the casting process do they ask them are you willing to be matched with someone with children and if so does the number of children matter? Do you have a limit? Because that's a big deal. That is a huge deal because children are involved. You don't want someone to be matched with someone who doesn't like children at all. I, mean, I don't understand why they don't ask that because she seems like someone who would have preferred to be matched with someone with no children. That's how she comes across. So she says, you don't even look old enough to have children. So I was relieved when she, when she responded in that way because it wasn't like, oh my God, this is terrible. I can't do this. She didn't run away. Um, she didn't look like she was in a complete panic. She held herself together pretty well. And so she says, you don't even look old enough to have children. And she says that it's going to be a lot of pressure for her because, you know, his kids are probably very protective of him. And he was like, no, 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 my kids, you know, they want me to be happy. And so she is very nervous about being a mother figure because of the problems that she's had with her own mother the relationship that she's had with her mother obviously has been problematic so she's nervous if she can be a mother figure for these four kids so up until now she said that the decision of whether or not to have children has always been her own to make but now that choice has been taken away from her because she is immediately a stepmom just like that so at the reception, George tells her, because she asked him, do your children live with you? And he said that the two oldest live with him. And um, his relationship with his ex was very amicable, but he wouldn't go as far as to say that they were best friends. And then she was like, yeah, of course, you know, that would be, you know, kind of awkward. So they get a chance to separate and to go talk to their friends and family. And she goes to talk to one of her best friends and she tells her best friend, he's got four kids. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. And her friend was like, girl, don't, you know, don't walk away. She says, you need to give this guy a chance because he seems to be, you know, pretty amazing. So give him a chance. And then he goes, to, he goes to talk to his father and his father tells him, did you know that your wife was Miss Britain 2020. And so he was like, wow. I mean, he was absolutely tickled as punch to know that his wife was a beauty queen and a beauty queen winner at that. So he was really pleased about that. So he has a chance to talk to her best friend, which is Carlos. And Carlos tells him that due to her previous relationship, which was very traumatic, Carlos says that that relationship took her from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows and she's still is still trying to like find herself and recover from all of that and she has a lot of doubts about herself and she's extremely fragile so when Carlos was painting this picture of April like that I was kind of like okay for someone who is very fragile and who has a lot of doubts about herself why would they put her in this situation where not where she will not only be judged by her husband but she will also be judged by four kids plus an ex-wife. 
for someone who's like gone through, uh, you know, a crazy relationship or a traumatic relationship, that's a lot for them to take on. You know, you have to please all of these people. It's just I, I, didn't, I didn't think that that was a good idea to put someone who's been through something like that in a, in a situation where she's in a she's going to be in uh, she's going to be put into a ready made family. So April does say, though, that George is definitely what she needed 100 percent. So that's good. You know, the fact that he's got the four kids has not scared her off. She still wants to be in this. She does see some potential in him. So we'll see where that goes. Very good episode. Very, very good episode. And it's only an hour long. Um, I love it because when the hour is over, I'm like wanting more, but not really. It was a good episode. Really enjoyed myself. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. On your way out, please don't forget to subscribe. If you like, I mean, please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.